Hey guys, uh, I'm back today with another genetics video. Um, I realize a lot of you have questions or there's things you want in more detail. Uh, feel free to put a note in the comments if there's anything you'd like me to review in more detail, uh, if there's any other videos, if there's things you'd like to know more about. Um, feel free, drop a comment, and I'm happy to make a video explaining anything you want more depth, with more detail, with more practice problems. Um, with that, let's get into today's topic, which is polygenetics and multiple alleles. Um, and we're going to fade into the uh, whiteboard here. So a lot of you might realize that a lot of the traits we've talked about so far have only had a few different options, right? We've talked about uh, flowers that could be white, pink, or red. Uh, we've talked about cows that could be black or white or white with black spots. And we've talked about some Mendelian traits like Mendel's pea plants that could either be pink or um, white. But when we look at traits in the real world, they're a little bit more complicated than that. Um, if you look at eye color, there might be a few main eye colors like brown, green, blue, hazel. Uh, but if you look at two people with brown eyes, well, they're there's not really two people who have the same eye color. And if you look at fingerprints, they're infinitely different. And if you look at blood types, there's at least eight of them. Um, and so when we look at this, we realize we need to go a little bit deeper to understand how things work in the real world. Um, so just as kind of a quick review, um, we've talked about uh, that when we study genetics, Right? When you look at a pair of chromosomes, one of them comes from your mother, one of them comes from your father. Um, and the genes that match up on these chromosomes are always going to be the same. Right? They're always going to have the same genes, genes here. And we just call this a gene. Right? You might call this uh, a color gene. It might be a size gene. It might be a whatever gene. But this is the same gene. Right? Even though these are two separate chromosomes, you get one from your mom, one from your dad. The same spot on both of them is the same gene. And you can have different alleles, right? Uh, so last time we talked about, right, you might have a straight-haired allele on this side and a curly-haired allele on this side, um, and they would come together and make a brand new protein, right? So there's three main options. In reality, there's hundreds of different things that can happen. Um, but just for simplicity's sake, we're going to say there's, there's three main things that can happen, right, with the two proteins that get made. The one protein from your mother, the one protein from your father. On those three things, we can have a Mendelian relationship. We could have an incomplete dominance relationship. Or we could have a codominance. Codominance. And so we might have two proteins are always going to get made. One of them might take over the other one. Those two proteins might come together and make a third totally different protein, or we could see both of those proteins in the phenotype. Um, so this is still going to hold true, but sometimes there's more than just two possible alleles, right? So when you look at something like hair type, there's, there's only two alleles. There's a straight-haired allele, and there's a curly-haired allele. But what if we look at something more complicated? Um, the first example we're going to look at here is something that has multiple alleles, more than two alleles, and that's blood type. And we like to use blood type as an example because with blood type, there's only three alleles. So it's not too complicated yet, okay? So in humans, if we look at the phenotypes for blood, there's four phenotypes that exist in humans. There's A, B, there's A, there's B, and there is O. And I made these lines way too long. OK? So there are four different phenotypes we can see in humans. Um, and that's because, and those come out as a result of three different alleles, OK? So we have to remember, alleles are used to make proteins. Um, so if you have an A allele, your body makes blood cells that have little A proteins on the outside of them. Now in the real world, obviously, they don't look like little A's because you wouldn't want razor sharp pointy A's flying through your bloodstream. They'd slice your um, 
veins to ribbons and nobody wants that. Uh, but I'm just gonna draw them like little A's to make it simpler. If you have a B protein, if you have a B allele, your body makes little B-shaped proteins. Once again, they're not actually shaped like bees. If your body has an, what we call an O allele, your body doesn't make any proteins at all. Okay, so if your body has two, let's start with the A's. Okay, well, we'll make another, we got genotypes. So if you got one A allele from your mom and one A allele from your dad, your blood cells are only going to have A proteins on the outside. But if you get an A protein from your mom and an O protein from your dad, hey, the A is gonna make proteins, but that O is gonna do absolutely nothing at all, right? It's one of those broken genes we talked about earlier. And so if you have AO, your blood type's actually only gonna be a, because this O doesn't do anything. And the same here goes for B, right? You could have two B proteins. You could have two B alleles, and they would each make B proteins. Or you could have a B allele, which makes B proteins, and an O allele, which does absolutely nothing. Um, if you have two alleles, in order to have a cell with no proteins on the outside, which is what O means, you have to have two O alleles. Now the last combination, and this one's actually pretty rare in real life, is you could have an A allele and a B allele, in which case your body would make A proteins and B proteins. Um, so you would need to have both an A allele and a B allele to have these last types, okay? And so what that means is that if you look at the relationship, A and B are both dominant to O, right? So that's a Mendelian relationship. But if you look at A and B together, A and B are co-dominant to each other, right? Because when we have A and B together, they make a third phenotype. Okay, so if we have A and O together, it's the same phenotype as AA, right? So we call that a Mendelian trait. And then A and B are together, we call them co-dominant uh, because you see both of the proteins. Okay, and this is kind of important for people to know because hey, if you have A blood, your body is only used to seeing A proteins floating around your body. So if you have A blood and you get, and you're like in a car accident, lose a lot of blood, and you go to the hospital and get a blood transfusion, and the doctor gives you B blood, your body <laughs> does not like seeing those B proteins there. It thinks they're invaders, it thinks they're bad guys, and it's gonna send out white blood cells to take these B proteins and kill them and clump them all together, and these clumps of blood are gonna clog your arteries and get into your heart and cause heart attacks, um, and that almost always proves to be fatal. And so if you have type AB blood, right, your body is used to seeing both A proteins and B proteins. So you can get blood from both A people or B people and you can even get blood from O people because O people have no proteins whatsoever, right? So if I have A blood, I can take O blood because there's no proteins to set off any alarms. If I have B blood, I can also take in O blood because there's no proteins to set off any alarms. Um, on the other hand, if I have O blood, which I do happen to have O blood, I can only take O blood from other people if I were ever in a car accident or something because my body's not used to seeing any proteins there. So if I see blood protein, blood cells with any proteins at all, my body's gonna freak out. Um, okay, and so that's kind of the simple basics of blood type, um, right? So this is, these are the letters in blood type. But some of you might be saying, well, hold on a second, Mr. Bortz. Uh, haven't we heard of something? Isn't there something else in blood types? There's like a plus minusy kind of thing? And I would say, yeah, there is. There's actually a whole nother gene on a whole different chromosome that's gonna control a different aspect of your blood type, okay? And so we have this other thing, we call it an RH factor. Um, and, we, and RH is a big fancy word for the name of proteins. 
the protein, but we usually call it the plus or minus, okay? So once again, we have a pheno, I'm just gonna write P and G for phenotype and genotype uh, because I'm lazy. But once again, we have two different phenotypes. We have plus or minus, okay? And we have kind of the same thing going on, right? Um, where if you have the plus gene, your body is gonna make this RH protein, and I'm just gonna draw like a plus. Once again, it doesn't look like a plus in real life. Um, on the other hand, I don't know why I wrote a one there. Um, on the other hand, this what we call the minus gene or the negative gene doesn't make any proteins at all, okay? So if your body has a one copy of the plus gene and one copy that does nothing at all, it's just gonna make it's gonna make plus proteins. Or if it has two copies of the plus gene, it's gonna make these plus proteins. In real life, these plus proteins are called RH factors. Don't worry about too much about the terminology. If you wanna, if, if you want, <laughs> you don't get to choose any of this. Um, if, you're, if you're a person with negative blood, you actually have to have two broken copies of the genes that make no proteins at all. Um, so it's actually possible. So when we go to think about what kind of blood we give somebody if they've been into a car accident, there's actually two different sets of proteins we need to think about, right? Because we could have a person here who has AB blood, okay? We could have somebody who has AB blood and the RH protein. And this person, they're kind of lucky in a way. Uh, because they can receive blood from literally anybody on planet Earth, right? They can get, they have A proteins, they have B proteins, and they have plus proteins. So their body is cool with seeing any single one of those proteins. On the other hand, right, so this person we call them A, B positive. On the other hand, I've got a better looking plus. On the other hand, we can have somebody who has O negative. And this person would have no proteins whatsoever on the outside of their blood cells. And so this person here is kind of lucky because they can give blood to anybody on the planet, right? I could, this person could give blood to literally anybody because they don't have any proteins to set off alarms in that person's body. Um, but if this person gets blood from somebody with even a single protein on the outside, uh, their body's going to reject it and going to have really serious health problems, right? So here's an example of a trait that has both multiple alleles, right? It's got three different alleles, A, B, and O. Um, and this is also an example of a polygenic trait, right? So there's more than one gene that goes up into making this phenotype, right? Because the phenotype has two aspects to it. Um, so I'll give you a second if you want to kind of take notes or write any of this down, you're welcome to pause the video here. I kind of recommend from a teacher point of view that you pause here, maybe rewatch this part, take some notes about this part, and, and I'm going to give you another example in a second, okay? Um, and the second example we're going to talk about is eye color, okay? So eye color is another example of a trait uh, that has lots of different alleles and lots of different genes involved. All right, so eye color is kind of interesting because on chromosome 15, there are actually two main genes for eye color. Um, and there's a great article that explains this. It's kind of tricky and it's a little bit sciencey if you're in high school, um, but I'll put it in the description. I'll put it in the description of this video uh, if you'd like to get a little extra information. Um, so on chromosome 15, uh, there are two genes for eye color, okay? This first gene here is gonna determine the main color of your eyes. Okay, whether that be like blue, brown, brown has an N at the end, or green. Okay, but there's another gene down here that modifies these, and this other gene can darken or lighten um, these colors here, right? 
So if you notice, if you look at somebody with blue eyes, you might notice that there's some people with really dark blue eyes and some people with really light blue eyes. And so you get the main color gene here, and those main color genes, for the most part, usually, brown is dominant to both blue and green. Uh, and then blue and green kind of have this funky relationship with each other where one or the other can be dominant, depending on what other genes you have in your body, but <laughs> we won't get there yet. Just so you see, this starts to get a little bit more complicated. And so you have this main color here, and you could have different genes here that can darken or lighten these. So you might have two alleles here and both of them darken your eye color, right? So if you have blue eyes and you have two other alleles that are making that color really dark, you might end up with really, really dark, dark, deep blue eyes, right? Uh, eyes that look like an ocean on a stormy day. On the other hand, you might have no alleles here, right? You might get two alleles here that that lighten the eyes, right? And you might end up with eyes that are really light blue, right? You might think of like a clear, like a lake on a clear day. Um, and there's even a gene, a weird freaky allele you can get here that will make blue eyes dominant to brown eyes. It's really, really rare, but it's, it's technically possible. Um, so this is one of these things where it's even more complicated than I originally thought it was. I was doing some research earlier today about eye color, and it turns out in the last couple of years, since the last time I researched it, we've learned a bunch of stuff, and we've learned that there's a bunch more genes involved in eye color than we had originally thought. Um, so when we look at genetics, we, we're constantly getting more information about how lots of individual genes go in to make really simple traits. And when we stop to think about that, that really makes sense because, well, if you think about something as complicated as a human eye, does it really make sense that one single protein from one single gene could give us something as complicated as the human eye? And that goes for a lot of things. That goes for hair color, that goes for height, that goes for weight. All of these things have a ton of genes going into them. And so when we start to think about this, maybe, and, and I'll leave you with this kind of thought to meditate on. Now, if you're a genetic engineer and you want to give somebody dark blue eyes, you have to not only think about what gene to edit here, but what gene to edit here. And not only that, but it turns out that these genes that darken and lighten eye color also can darken and lighten skin color or hair color. So imagine you want to give somebody light blue eyes. You might give, if you're a genetic engineer, you might pop a blue gene in here, and you might tark, put a darkening gene in here, but you're also going to end up darkening their skin and their hair and a lot of other things. Um, so we're going to go into a little bit more detail in the next video, talking about how big networks of genes work together. Um, but it's important to start understanding that really complex attributes in complicated living things like plants and animals take lots of genes working together. Um, and if you want to genetically engineer anything complicated, you not only have to understand you don't just have to genetically engineer one gene, you might have to genetically engineer hundreds of genes, and those genes all work together with lots of other things that control other attributes in the body. Um, so as we finish off this video, I want you to start thinking about how complicated it is and how many proteins it takes working together to make a living thing functional. Um, once again, if you have any questions or you want to know anything more about this, if you want me to talk about anything in a little bit more detail, uh, put a note in the comments, send me a message. Um, I'm happy to hook it up. Uh, and as always, may the force be with you. Have a great day.